Welcome to Heartland Dual Sport. This morning we're going to be riding with Woodsman and his son and Blake. So uh, let's go ride. Good morning and thanks for tuning in to Heartland Dual Sport again and this is a continuation of the <laughs> trip with Woodsman and his son and Blake and this is basically this is the start of day two and what I've decided to do is uh, as you guys know Woodsman's already uploaded several of the videos from our trip and a lot of the guys that subscribe to me subscribe to him as well so that we don't have a bunch of redundancy I'm just going to kind of go into uh, maybe a little bit of, of a different mode this morning and uh, kind of tell you about last night at the end of the day yesterday you know we went back to camp I believe I've told you we base camped out of the Roaring River State Park and again we uh, we had a really really good dinner we had uh, I think we ended up grilling out some uh, fresh corn, some uh, fresh venison, steaks, and uh, just a few other vegetables, maybe some potatoes and some other stuff. But I mean, for the most part, I mean, it was just a really nice, relaxing uh, camp area. It was nice to get back and take a shower at the campgrounds and, and just sit down and relax around the campfire and just uh, really had a good visit and fellowship with with everybody and it was just uh, it was just a it was a blessing I mean it was just the weather was great and the friends were great and family was great and it was just a just a really good relaxing evening we got up this morning <clears throat> we got up this morning <laughs> and had a, another really good breakfast we had bacon and eggs and I don't remember if uh, I'm quite sure Sherry made us some pancakes or something else also but we just uh, you know kind of kicked it no real rush the temperatures weren't going to be extremely high so we weren't trying to rush out and beat the heat or anything else but uh, after after breakfast we took off north out of the campground again similar to the way we had went uh, the first day but about halfway through the trail it jogs off to the right and we went right up and over and uh, around and we ended up taking uh, some, it hooked back up to another blacktop road. But th when you take this trail to the right, it's gonna be, you know, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it in the video, but this, uh, this trail going up and out of there is actually really steep and it's also canted kind of at an off camber at about a, about a, I, it felt like 45 degrees. I mean, I don't know that it was that steep, but it sure felt like it when you when you were riding it. it. I'm telling you, it's pretty dang steep. Probably one of the steeper steeper trails I've been on, and uh, it actually this particular trail right off the bat ends up being real steep, and it's uh, it makes the K trail look like a cakewalk. It uh, it's actually pretty steep, but then after we got up to the top of this and. It hooks back up to a blacktop road, and then we took uh, the blacktop, and I'll kind of fast forward through a lot of this oh, yeah. blacktop road if if we're there on the video right now. We'll go ahead and fast forward through that, and uh, then we get off on another another trail. And I'd like to uh, stop right here for a minute and go ahead and let you know if you guys, I've mentioned several times that we've got the GPS. And uh, man, I'm really, really pleased with how well this GPS is working. And as a side note, if you guys have not uh, subscribed to our website, and essentially what it, what our website is, it's a it's a blogger from WordPress. So you can go on there and you can actually subscribe. But what I'm going to start doing a lot of these trails and the trips, and and again, this is a three-day trip, so the GPS file will actually be pretty big because it's going to be basically from us rolling into town and then uh, we're all the road over the three days but I'm going to go ahead and I'll upload the GPS tracks on the website so if you guys are are wanting to uh, 
maybe you've never explored around here, maybe you do or do not know Woodsman, or maybe the timing won't be right and you won't be able to hook up with him, I'm going to go ahead and upload the file. Like I say, it's going to be free. You don't have to uh, pay me anything. It's going to be uh, basically just the GPS tracks from where all we went and we rode. And again, all these trails are open to the public. And uh, as far as I know, my GPS is very, very accurate. Okay. Now, I will say, and here's a little caveat, just like with everything, um, it's, it's, it's a piece of equipment, and equipment can sometimes be faulty. So if you end up rolling up on something that looks like it's private or it is marked private, um, obviously there's a problem because everywhere we went was uh, actually legal to be there. It's going to be the public roads and public trails and, and whatnot. But again, I mean, there's always mistakes between downloading stuff, uploading stuff, and files can get kind of jumbled up. But uh, one of the things that I did learn when you're, when you're out on the trails here in the Mark Twain National Forest and in and around in, uh, in southwest Missouri, yeah. and I'm sure it's probably the same. We did go into Arkansas quite a bit as well, but if you roll up on a trail and the trees have purple paint on them or a purple ribbon on them, the purple means it's private. So essentially what it is, it could be a driveway leading off of one of the main trails or roads off to somebody's private property. Way up in the middle of nowhere we got, and we were in the top of one of the mountains and, and rode a trail that it, you know, it ended up getting so small I'd call it a goat path. I mean, it, it was not by any means a, a main road, but once you got up there, it kind of, I don't know, I, I guess you would call it a little bit of a Y or something. You could see where the, the trail is, I mean, getting to the point it's non-existent, but there was uh, actually some purple paint on the trees, and that lets you know that from there on is uh, going to be private property. And, you know, you can remember P purple private and that's the easiest way all the other trails are actually marked pretty good some of them and i mean again a lot of them are like main dirt roads so i mean there's going to be no confusion at all but once you get off the dirt roads and you start going on some of these trails uh trying to follow the gps tracks if you end up taking ours you'll see there's uh there's still quite a few trails that you can ride on legally out here and, and it's just uh really cool deal and, it, and it's something that I kind of want to share and that's something that we're going to be doing in the future so if you haven't subscribed to our blog page on WordPress you can find it real easy I'll uh, put a link down below I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll have uh, my domain name pointed towards the WordPress so basically you can type in www.heartlanddualsport.com and it should link you straight up to the WordPress blog that I've started Again, guys, give me a little bit of time on the on the blog. I'm trying to upload a bunch of stuff. I'm working full time, and then I'm trying to get caught up on videos as well. So, the uh, actual page needs some work. I'm still trying to figure out how to do the the WordPress and maybe add different pages and and links on there as well. But I'm trying, guys. So just bear with me. But uh, that's something that I want to do is uh, just offer that up to you guys and let you know that we're going to be posting our trails and that's going to continue on the future as long as I can keep my GPS working and keep it powered up. The cool thing about it on this GPS tracks it actually has the date so you can kind of go through and look and see on the tracks itself it'll tell you where we were at on on each different day and then that can kind of help you decide on depending on how far of a trip or how long you're going to be there how many of the trails you could or couldn't ride and you can kind of get a good idea based on looking at the trails the amount of time that we spent on the trails because that's actually pretty cool with the gps files that garmin has but uh anyhow back to the trail as you can see we we've, we've gone on a bunch of just beautiful trails here with the one thing i do want to point out if you guys ever do get to go out and ride with woodsman if he asks you a question like uh and, and this was his basic question, and I figured this out pretty quick after we'd been riding together. He'd say, well, what do you think about the trail? You know, and I'd answer, I'd be like, man, this is really awesome. You know, it's nice and easy and laid back. If I had a seat belt on my motorcycle, 
any time that he asks that question, I'd be putting my seatbelt on because that pretty much lets you know that uh, the trail's going from nice and easy, easy to uh, you better hang on because it's it's fixing to make a turn for the uh, more fun adventure side. If you if you understand the uh, trails he took me on, some of them were I would rank probably five to eight in difficulty. Again, I'm not a pro rider. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a pro dirt bike guy. I'm just a guy that really enjoys nature, and I've spent a great deal of time out in nature, whether I be riding four-wheelers, three-wheelers, motorcycles, or uh, the Enduros. And uh, there was a lot of stuff that I found to be challenging. I, uh, you know, we did anything from the, the driver over crossing to uh, water crossings to... Uh, crossing some pretty decent sized logs that had fallen over the trail again if you're going to be using my gps tracks to come up here i probably would not ride a klr on half these trails i think that bike's going to be a hair big but again i mean that's something you can get up to the trail and decide for yourself whether or not you want to take the trail but a lot of the trails are just very difficult and i probably wouldn't ride anything bigger than like my drz 400 r now, with that said, I know that there's a bunch of very talented riders that could probably smoke me on my 400, and they could be on a uh, KLR or a GS 800 for that matter. So uh, a lot of this just depend on your skill level. I'm not going to say that I'm extremely skilled. I'm just going to say that I'm pretty confident in my uh, slow rolling skills, and when you start getting into this technical terrain, your uh, slow rolling balance is a lot of times what keeps you shiny side up and and I feel pretty good about that as well so the uh, again the trails are awesome they're a good fun challenge and, and again they're anything from easy laid back dirt roads to the spurs where you end up riding off you can watch uh, some more of these vid the video as we're going along through here I'm kind of hitting some of the highlights oh uh, yeah you guys are killing me <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot for an old fat man. No, I'm talking about me. <laughs> we were fortunate oh, on the oh, second dang, day to yep. actually roll up mm -hmm. on a, Get, a rattlesnake Get out in the wild. I had never seen one out in the wild yeah, I've, that's my first day I, you know as a kid i think i can remember one time we were down at hollis oklahoma and i believe there was one crossing the road but we didn't stop we didn't have a camera or anything like that so i mean i don't even know that that counts but uh this one was laying out in the middle of one of these rock roads and uh we yeah. were able to stop and get some pictures of it i mean it was just absolutely to me it was super exciting i mean it's almost like seeing a bear in the wild it's just oh, yeah. not something that you see every day and awesome. being the nature yeah. lover that i am i love wildlife and i have a great amount of respect for snakes and stuff and uh when we get into uh one of the next videos i think that we're going to end up putting out it's going to be kind of the uh going to be kind of the end of the series of these videos from southwest missouri and I, i'm going to spend a little bit of time showing you a lot of the uh, nature that we've seen and uh, as well as some of the snakes we were able to either walk up on or ride up on um, butterflies the fish the fish hatchery and uh, look forward to that video as we continue on with this video here i'm just going to kind of we're just going to kind of let it roll out you can uh, see i mean there's just an abundance amount of awesome trails up in here in the national forest again this is mark twain national forest it's in uh, southwest missouri and i believe it reaches all the way into uh, northwest arkansas and we rode all around in there and we just really really had a great time day two was a uh, it was a, just a great day we we spent uh, several hours riding and uh, the majority of the day we did take uh, you know a couple of breaks for eating some snacks and and again one thing that that I would like to uh, you know if, you, if you're gonna go out here and take on some of these trails that we've been on I uh, always carry my backpack with me and it's got my hydration and this this day was no different I like having the, the uh, 
the Wolfman backpack has its own little hydration bladder that hooks into it and I really you you guys that do know me know I drink a lot so I mean that's pretty handy to have out on the trail we were able to stop at a couple of different stations we ended up filling up with gas once or twice and uh, we uh, we just had a, a great time but when we're stopped at the stores I'll always go ahead and buy a deal Gatorade or something like that and rehydrate up but uh, guys carry your water with you because you never know if you end up we we got back at the back of this one trail and I don't know I mean it was probably 20 25 some odd miles 30 miles back to base camp and and my DRZ actually died on me for no reason and I think I've got that problem figured out. It was, uh, it was kind of the, it, it, some sort of vent problem that I was having. But uh, if I would open up my gas tank, I mean, it would just suck air in. So, I mean, basically you'd be riding along and then your bike would just die like you turned it off because it, was, uh, it wasn't venting properly. I think riding through a lot of the mud and water that we went through, I probably ended up getting one of the vent hose uh, clogged up. But I was able to get that cleaned up, and we, we got back. Luckily for, for me, I mean, the bike would start back up once you'd let it suck some air into the tank. And uh, But once I got back home at the end of the trip, I, I'm pretty sure I figured out what it was. I cleared out some lines and got some mud and stuff out of there, and, and everything's working again. But uh, you don't want to get way back off in here somewhere, break down, and not have... Uh, food and water you know in case you end up having to stay the night or whatever and, and again as you guys know I carry uh, quite a few tools with me every time I go out and if you haven't seen the videos on the loadout you can uh, you can watch the, it's going to be under the uh, show and tell Mondays but I've got a couple of videos that are already out on on loadouts between the multi-day trip and then the stuff that I also carry with me every time I go out so uh, tools are really handy and important and uh, you know sometimes things happen you end up breaking down I mean it's just gonna happen but don't go out here on these trails without at least uh, you know a half day or a full day of, of food and uh, mostly don't forget your hydration I mean as most of you know you can according to what they tell you you can go multiple days without eating but you can only go just a anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours without water depending on the heat and and uh, how much you're exerting yourself so last thing you want to do is break down way out here in the middle of nowhere and not have uh, the stuff to fix yourself or your bike so carry both of them and that's that's another reason i encourage you to look into like the wolfman wolfie backpack it's uh it's really an awesome deal i'll put a link down below and and again, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in to Heartland Dual Sport. I hope that you all have a blessed week, and uh, let's go ride. On the trailblazer right there. <laughs> Sorry.